to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog out of the book of Philippians. Welcome to those who access the podcast through the Be Young Ministry uh, YouTube channel. <clears throat> Today we continue in Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, which reads, Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write to you the same things again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in in the flesh. That's Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. We finished the second chapter of this epistle with the spotlight on Epaphroditus, a fellow soldier for the advancement of the gospel. Paul begins chapter 3 with an admonition, rejoice in the Lord, which is the theme of this letter. And of course, as we've considered in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, it is the strength of the believer. In today's text, Paul turns the tables on those who put confidence in the flesh. Rejoicing in the Lord overcomes the desire to put confidence in the flesh. Those who put confidence in the flesh are described by the apostle in verse 2 in three ways. Dogs, evildoers, and those mutilators of the flesh. <laughs> Sounds like words we use today, right? <laughs> Not. The apostle underscores the flesh in this chapter because it is the cause of the third potential joy stealer in our lives. The potential joy stealer is our pedigree and our possessions. And of course, the unique thing about the Lord Jesus that is accentuated is that the Lord Jesus must be our goal. He must be our pursuit in all of life. And we'll consider that more tomorrow. Those who put confidence in the flesh, these in this chapter, thought of themselves as doers of righteousness in accordance with the Mosaic Law. By relying on the law, they were actually out of step with the God of the Bible. And the problem wasn't the law. It was their arrogance. It was their pride. You see, they were missing God because their hearts were not circumcised and engaged with the Lord Jesus. I use the word circumcised here as an illustration, as Paul does. Literally, he's talking about a changed heart. God has always been about the circumcision of our hearts. Outward circumcision was simply meant to be a sign of God's commitment to the Jews. Every time they were reminded of God's commitment, this was meant to make a certain impact on their hearts and ours. The impact is that we would fling open the doors of our hearts to the one who made them. This is what God really wants, the engagement of our hearts with him. Paul offers a description of the true people of God to counter his description of the false. The apostle writes in verse 3, We who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. The people of God are those who serve God by His Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who makes us worshipers of God. He calls forth worship that is genuine and deep instead of fake and superficial. True worship and service are produced by the Holy Spirit who, re who resides in our spirit. And the godly results which come out of our existence are produced by the Spirit of God, not by us, so we can't take credit for it. 
In addition, the people of God are those who boast in Christ Jesus. To boast most of the time is unbiblical. To boast here is. To boast is to put the spotlight on the Lord Jesus. It means to worship him rather than anything else, including ourselves. From our childhood, we've been taught the way to become important is through self-confidence. This only leads to pride. And the cross of the Lord Jesus is the end of the line for our pride. Due to the fact that we're still fallen, we face life feeling weak, ineffectual, and unable. Since this is so, we must be driven to the one who is totally adequate and who is ready to be our strength. This is the way God intended for us to live. The people of God are those who put no confidence in the flesh. The true children of God put no confidence in our abilities to do the Lord's work. True believers don't believe their successes have anything to do with being made right with the Lord or maintaining our rightness before him. Self-confidence is the most deadly lie that has ever been perpetrated upon the human race. Every day we are painfully made aware that we cannot live life on our own and alone. If we acknowledge this and cry out to God for help daily, this is always the turning point in our daily lives. If we don't have faith in the God of the Bible and we achieve things, we are in the greatest danger of placing our faith in self. But the problem with self-made men is they tend to worship their creator. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.